This is St John's Church. So I know about this gravestone. These are the parents of my ancestor's husband. So I knew they were here. It's like summer here. And it's so peaceful. that the jets have been a feature here in the Lake District for 
years I remember seeing them. When I was here, we used to holiday in the Lake District when we were kids. So it feels weirdly like coming back home in Keswick, where I am now, is a place we used to come to. When I did my last car camping trip, um, which was on the Scottish borders last year, I tried to pack a lot in. I think I had about five graveyards to check and some towns. It was just so much. But I literally only have two graveyards in one place to do. So now I'm here. I shouldn't have to move my car again until tomorrow morning. I'll drive up to the other graveyard because it has its own car park. But, um, so that's nice. And I'm trying to pace myself. I've almost finished the first graveyard and it's only one o'clock. Um, and I want to go and look in the town because there are various streets that I know my elusive ancestor lived in and I want to go and take some photographs of that. I haven't found her. I found her husband's parents who I knew were here. I'd already seen their gravestone on find a grave. And I have found lots of people who I think are probably there might be one or two of their children here, um, but grandchildren and great-grandchildren for sure, and I've just seen another one, so I'm going to go over and take a photograph of that one. I'm just photographing everything that might be related, and then I'll look at the tree afterwards and work out where they fit. Um, but it's nice coming to places like this, because nothing really changes. So you'll see the same names, and the generations of families who've lived and died here. And it's really comforting. I like these places. They are a reminder that life is short. And it keeps you grounded. So I'm going to walk over to this other relative who may be a grandson of my ones. I need to look at the dates. So many names, so many people. Um, I'm going to stop for a break in a bit. There's some lovely benches plotted up around the yard and I'm just going to sit and have a rest and eat my prawn cracker snacks and have some water. It's really warm here. It's like summer. It's t-shirt weather. It's so warm. It's absolutely gorgeous. I couldn't have asked for a better day to be traipsing around in a graveyard, basically. So, that's better. You can see me now. That's glorious.
hear me. It's really quiet here. It's so warm. It's sweltering. It's summer weather here. <sighs> Get my shoes and socks off because my feet are sweltering. It's just so hot. Feet do not like being in hot, sweaty shoes all day. It's not nice. Completed my first churchyard, and I've been for a look around the town just to get a feel for it. I found two two streets that I think my ancestors lived on, but town is rammed. It's so busy. It's too much. So it's still early. So I've come back to get some food. Have a rest because I've been on my feet since 11 o'clock. Um, get some cold water and rinse off because I'm so sweaty and gross. And then I'm going to go back into the town later and have a wander around and get some nice pictures. Uh, yeah, so. Right, so yes, yeah, so I'm back. Um, have some food. See if I can. The cool box out from underneath my bed. And then later on, when it's uh, cooled off a bit and the people have gone, or some of the people have gone, I'm going to go back into town and have a look around. Going into town was quite good actually because um, I checked out the toilets so the, the public toilets in the town are not free. They, um, they're 50p a go. I understand why. Keswick is just rammed with tourists, but um, I'm not paying 50p to go to the toilet. Um, a, f a few minutes on is the Booth supermarket, and they have toilets. 
they're open from 7am to 10pm and the first hour of parking is free. So tomorrow morning that means that I can drive from here, I can drive to booths, I can go into booths, use the, the toilet in the morning, buy something and then head off to the second um, the second church. So that's going to be nice and easy. Keswick is really pretty. It really is so pretty. Um, the only problem I would say is, I mean it is a very touristy place and I think it's suffered from tourism since forever because it's the Lake District. Um, but I have noticed that a lot of the, the cottages in the town are um, all holiday lets. Everything seems to have a sign on the outside with who you can call to let this place. And, you know, it kills a community when all the properties are just for tourists. Treat myself to one of these drinks because it's really warm. I hope it doesn't go everywhere. Open the door. Mm. The other thing you need to watch for in town is all the dogs. I was tripping over dogs and long dog leads everywhere. It's a proper tourist town, it really is. It drive me nuts. I'm gonna find ways to skirt around the town, I think. This is a great parking spot. The hills are so beautiful. I don't know what the names of these ones are. Once the phone's charged up, I'm going to have a really nice wander in town and just amble about, look at things. Oh, I did treat myself by the way. Didn't do fish and chips. I'm not paying that for it, but I did get myself an ice cream. Double cones were four quid, which I think is pretty cheap in this day and age. Um, it was really nice. It was a, a, an Italian family uh, business that had been started in, I think it was something like 1901 or something like that. They had all the information outside and um, it was really nice. I had chocolate and rum and raisin. So that's my little treat. <laughs> I've had an ice cream in ages. It was so good. It was just fun. It was a nice little treat. My food selection seems a bit weird. I don't regret what I bought. So I've had a pork pie, uh, I've opened my can of drink, and now I'm going to have a wholemeal muffin with some peanut butter on it. Uh, if I can get into the thing anyway.
Where's my knife? Where's my knife? Is that my knife? No, it's my spoon, but that's my knife. It's, uh, it's not easy trying to live out of a tiny three-door hatchback. I'm not going to lie. Oh, there we go. I mean, the car will be absolutely trashed by the time I get back. I'm not going to lie. This is not an easy way to live. Can you imagine trying to live in a car this size? I don't suppose you would, would you? You just wouldn't. It'd be ridiculous. Um, <laughs> it's a fun couple of days. I don't mind. It feels like freedom. So when I was getting ready last night, um, or well, yesterday afternoon, I packed tried to make the bed in the car which I've now completely demolished to get to my uh, um, get to my food box as this wonderful calm serenity came over me I love going on these trips. It's like a glimmer of freedom. There's nothing tying me down, you know. I'm just in my car doing my thing. I could live like this if, if I had a van. The problem is that we're not terribly... Um, receptive to people who live in their vehicles so you can't park anywhere you get moved on and there's just so many cars in the world now and so many people living places and they want to park so a lot of the parking around here is residence disc so you have to be a resident and I don't blame them I mean in the summer holidays this place must be absolutely rammed I would never, ever go on holiday during the school holidays in the summer. I mean, it's the beginning of May, it's a midweek, and the town centre was rammed. I might have caught market day, there were a lot of market stores out, but I don't know if it's like that all the time, maybe it is. I need to find out what's on the end of this road. I even have phone signal here. My 4G works. It's pretty cool. So I'm going to have a look at what's the end, at the end of my road. Or this road, should I say, not my road. <clears throat> so let me work out where I am. Huh. So I think in front of me is under Skiddor. I'm looking at Skiddor. Skiddor on the left. And I think under Skiddor is on the right. If I carried on in a straight line, pretty much, I would get to the second church that I need to be at. And somewhere around there is another of the places where my ancestor lived. So, I should probably give you some background as to why I'm in Keswick. One of my family tree brick walls was a lady called Anne. And Anne was the sister of my great great grandfather. And she was always regarded as the black sheep of the family. So in the early days when I first started doing the family tree 30 odd years ago, and my, my granddad had done the basics of it. Um, this woman called Anne, who was my great-great-grandparent's daughter, had had a, a child or several children out of wedlock. 
But as I've done more and more research into my family tree, it seems that having children, single women having children out of wedlock was not a big deal. Because there are lots of them around. So Anne was always regarded as the black sheep because she was the only one that seemed to have had her children out of wedlock. She had a son who died when he was five and then two other sons. And when I was doing my research, I found another child, a daughter called Annie. And I found her baptism in the records, but it was ascribed in the right surname, but under another mother's name. And I thought it must have been an error. Um, and then I discovered that actually she was the illegitimate daughter of my ancestor Anne's sister Mary. And in fact, Mary went on to have five or six children out of marriage until she married. And she worked in service, um, mostly in Southport. And in one of the census returns, she's there working in a house as a house servant. And she's got two of her, her, her young daughters with her. And they're young. They're like three and five or something. And they're living with her at the house as she works. So I don't really think that it was that odd. But anyway, so, Anne has these three children and the two survivors then end up living with um, her mother because by then her mother was a widow. And indeed Mary's daughter Annie also lived with them for a time. So they've had these children out of wedlock, they've gone back into service, gone back to work, and they've left their children with their mother. And there seemed to be a lot of it about. Um, and Anne follows in the footsteps of Mary and goes to the same place as Mary and works in the same town. And then I lose her. She's very hard to keep track of because she moved around so much. She didn't stay in the area. Um, which was up in Cumberland, and then she's moved to Southport, and then she's somewhere else, and then I lose her. And for about 20 years, I've been trying to track down what happened to this woman. I could not find her anywhere. And it doesn't help that, uh, because the firm family surname has been corrupted, for a time, the children were going under several variations of their name, and you could never be sure whether you'd found the right person. Um, and then eventually, just by luck, don't even know how it happened. I happened to find her. She sprung up on a marriage return in Keswick, marrying a chap called Benjamin. And she stayed here the rest of her life and had another eight children. So the whole family stayed here and she died in 1908. So they're here somewhere. And in fact, the road behind me, which is Ambleside Road, which is one of the main roads leading into Keswick, is the road where her husband, Benjamin, grew up. So it's a very tight community. I mean, you look at it now, and there's lots of more modern houses. But if you go back to the 1860s, the 1870s, all the way up to, say, 1911, this was a very small place. So theoretically, finding them isn't difficult, and there are lots of her... Well, I, I would guess are her ancestors live uh, buried in the churchyard. I'm pretty sure I found some grandchildren and some great-grandchildren. I need to look at the record properly when I get back home. But I haven't found her. I found her husband's parents, which I knew I would because I knew they were there, but I haven't found her or her husband. Now that could be because they just don't have a gravestone, as often happens. Gravestones were expensive things back in the day. And they may just not have one. There are lots of empty spaces in the churchyard where there clearly are people buried, but there are no stones. And invariably, I don't find stones for my ancestors. Very, Not very often I find them. Because most of my ancestors 
are working class, they're relatively hand to mouth and gravestones, you're already paying for a funeral, you're already paying for a coffin, you're already paying for a, probably a, a church service, you know, it's probably wiped you out and a gravestone just isn't going to happen. So I haven't found gravestones for them, which doesn't really surprise me. Um, but I do have the other churchyard to check, and they may well be there. I know that there is at least one descendant of Anne's buried there. But I don't even really mind that much if I don't find anyone. I know they're here. I know they lived here. I've seen some of the streets they lived in. I know where they're buried, pretty much. You just don't always find gravestones. It's just one of those things. I know they're here. And what a place to live. It's just so beautiful here. I think it's going to be so quiet tonight. Can you hear the birds? Trying not to drink too much water. It gets really dehydrated, but um, there's no toilets. It's really hard to have a wee when you're a girl. It's not as easy as when you're a bloke. Fill up my water bottle. do have a bottle to use in the car at night because traditionally I always wake up twice in the night to go to the toilet which is really difficult when you're in a car it's an absolute nightmare I have a bottle to use um, I'm getting quite good at <laughs> stealth wheeze <laughs> you gotta do what you gotta do I can't lay there all night wanting to wet myself can I can you do? <sighs> feel pretty chilled. At least I'm not walking as much as I did last time. I was so tired. I did so much in the two days that I was here last time. It was too much. in front of me, on the other side, a van parked up just after I arrived and it's clearly a converted van for living in or travelling in and I saw the guy get out and go off but he's still here. And I wonder if he's going to spend the night in his van. That could be quite funny, couldn't it? If two of us have had the same idea. There's no street lights where I am. I'm actually just parked under the edge of a tree. 
there's a tree right behind me, so I'm kind of at the end of a curb. And there's a drive in front of me to the left, so I think I'm the only car that can park on this little section. And behind me and just to the back is a, a street light that's a like one of those solar lights. So I don't think it's going to be that bright. And it's just off the back, so I don't think it's going to be a problem for me because on this side, my passenger side where I'm going to be sleeping, is a tall beach hedge that screens the house that's behind it off from the road. So it feels like it's quite secluded here. Um, but safe. So if anything happened in the night, I could hit my horn or something and probably get someone's attention. So this feels like quite a good parking spot actually. It was funny actually because when I arrived and I walked back to the church, and that was originally where I wanted to park, literally as I was walking into the churchyard, somebody came back to their vehicle and left, and left a perfect me sized space behind. And I was like, oh, I could have parked there. But I think I'll be alright here. And I suppose thinking about it, sleeping next door to graves. And it's weird because the churchyard is raised up, so the level at which you are parked um, through the wall, there are the graves right next to you at head height. <laughs> so I'm probably better off here. It seems okay at the time, but imagine lying here at night in the dark and you're thinking, a few feet that way, there are people actually buried. I'm going to need to go back to Booth soon and use the facilities. And it doesn't get dark here really until about, I would say about nine at the moment. So I think it's going to be quite a while before I can settle in for the night. But the weather's so good, I can just go out and wander. I'm going to go and window shop. It's only 20 past three. I've only been back here 40 minutes. It's been nice to have a sit down though. Cool my feet off. I hate being stuck in sweaty socks and shoes all day. It's gross. Temperature's cooled off a little bit. Let's have a look, see what the weather's doing. It's 18 degrees here. You couldn't ask for more. Oh, it's gone up to 19. I've just refreshed the weather. 19 degrees here. It's going to be pretty wet tomorrow. So temperatures are going to dip down to, to 10 during the night. Uh, I did bring my hot water bottle though. And... 30% chance of rain during the day tomorrow so not too bad and I only have one churchyard to do and then I can go home so if it gets really wet I can then come back and dry off in the car in the morning I can shove all this into the back seats of the car so I can make the front a bit more normal and then I can use that for proper picnicking and get a bit more organised it just feels really crammed when I've got all the bedding here and I think before I head out again in a bit, I'm just going to relay the bed back down. Um, whether I'll eat any more, I don't know. Because once the bed's down, that's my call box, that's my food disappeared. But I will also want to brush my teeth and things like that. So if I walk all the way to the end of this road, straight over into the next road, and then turn left on the main road, 
that'll take me straight back into town. Right into the centre of town, so we're nice and close. You can't really get lost in Keswick. And I'm going to just go for a nice amble, I'm going to have a wander, have a look at some more shops. I am going to treat myself to a bit of that fruit and nut chocolate though. So let's put all this other stuff away. I've got plenty of food left to eat. Don't want it. It's a bit weird. Now I'm out and about doing stuff. I'm not as hungry. I sat here to eat these bits and pieces and I'm like... I'm already sick of eating muffins and... Muffins and peanut butter. What little ends you pick up. Yes, I know I had an ice cream. I'm going to have this. I'm going to tidy up. It's just so relaxing here. Apart from some work. I don't know what they're having done. There was a van with scaffolding poles on the back, so I think they're having something done to their roof. It's fine. Okay, so. Put the water away. It's not too difficult to put it all back in place. Let's put the towels up there. Now one of the towels I brought is because when you're sleeping in your car at night you build up a lot of body heat in the morning. <laughs> your windscreen is sopping wet. So I've brought that and I find it. It's just what I need. Oh, I've still got the rest of the prawn crackers in there. We'll keep those in there, you never know. Water bottle. Water bottle there. Toilet roll, notes, money, lurking in the car somewhere. Catch in a bit.
So I went back into town, had another little wander around, did some of the back roads, just had a wander, it was really nice. Uh, came back, did some admin, listened to a couple of podcasts, just waiting for uh, the light to go a bit. And I started to get a bit stiff because I've been sitting in the car seat for a while, so I went for another walk and town was really quiet. Some of the restaurants and what have you were still open and the bars were open and there were people in them and you could hear the conversations and all that sort of thing. But the whole area where the market was <laughs> is just desolate. There's like three or four people wandering about, a couple of people with dogs, a few walkers on their way back from their day out. And I got a chance of a proper look at some of the buildings and look at the names and get a feel for the people that I was tracking really just to see what was what was going on so that was really interesting I really enjoyed that it's now eight o'clock it's still quite light I'm watching the cloud cover come in over the hills in front over Skidor I think it's Skidor I'll have to check that when I get back make sure I'm right but um, I've had a cup of tea Enjoyed that, that was good. And uh, now I'm just waiting for it to go dark enough so I can try and lay out on this bed that I've made. Um, I've laid out the extra blankets for the night. It's quite warm in here at the moment. And I'm just hoping that, um, that I'm gonna get some sleep. We'll see what happens. <laughs> just have a look to see what the weather's doing get an update on the weather so it's still saying it's going to be about 13 degrees until nine o'clock tonight which is bizarre um, and tomorrow's rain it looks like the rain is moving away so it might not rain at all tomorrow when I'm up here which will be nice 17 degrees um, sun and cloud so if it's anything like it was today it'll be really nice uh, so, I'll probably have my alarm set for about 7, and then I'm just going to wake up. Hopefully, I will have slept, and it will be the alarm that wakes me up, not, um, not me just lying there for hours. If I can get stretched out properly, I might be okay. I've had this extra walk, so I've loosened up a bit, and if I can lay properly straight and not be impaled on any of the, the, the things on the seat, then hopefully I won't have too bad a night. We'll see how we get on. This is the last ditch. If, and as I say, if this does work, then I will probably buy like a memory foam rollout mattress that I can put just on the seat over some blankets just to make it flat. And I'll use that instead because using my sofa cushions is is not ideal I mean for two or three times a year at the most it's not that bad and it really depends a lot on what I'm doing after I've done this trip I don't know what else I need to research that's within a reasonable distance and that I can do in like one night I'd like to go up to Northumberland and have a look for um, ancestors up there there's quite a lot going on up there but that's going to be at least two nights because it's a long way and I don't think I could sleep for two nights in my car I could look at a hotel I had a look here uh, lots of guest houses and B&Bs there's a premier in the cheapest room I could find was 118 for a night I'm not paying that just for one night um, if I can make this work then this will do so We'll see how we get on. I had looked through some of my photos today and I've had a chance to sit and look through the family tree online on my phone and three of the graves I found were three of my ancestor Anne's sons. So they're there. I know they're there somewhere. So that's good. So I am just going to sign off I think I feel like I've done enough for for one day it's been a good day it's been uh, 
productive. I found as much as I thought I would. I didn't think I was going to find any, you know, miracles. And I'm used to not finding the people that I'm looking for in graveyards. So that's fine. It's nice to get up here and get a... It's about getting a feel for how they lived and where they lived and just understanding their lives. I like that, that I can now, whenever I'm looking um, at the census and the names and the people that were in this area, I can go, oh, yeah, I know exactly where that is now. Because you can look at it on maps and you can look on, you know, Google Street View and whatever, but when you actually get here and you get a proper feel for it, I mean, this street that I'm parked in for the night... In their time, this wasn't here. This was all. This was fields. This did not exist. This was the last road. The next road over on the left was the last road for the town. So that was um, Erskine Street or Erskine Road. This is Manor Park. Manor Park did not exist. Not in the maps that I've been looking at. Um, and I've, I've got some wooden surveys that I've been using to find out where people lived. So it's weird to think that had I been here like a hundred odd years ago, this would have been a field. It's so quiet. It's so quiet. All I can hear is the song thrush singing. And I can see the clouds coming in lower and lower. So I'm going to leave you with that. I think you'll like that. I'm going to end that here. I'm just going to wind down, read some articles on Pocket, listen to a podcast, and as soon as it's dark, I'm going to turn in. I've probably got about an hour to go. It's about half eight now. So uh, I'm going to get some extra charge on these phones, and then um, I'll see you in the morning. Hope you have a good night. <laughs> Whenever you're watching this, I hope you've had a good night. <laughs> Speak to you soon.